In the past couple years, Max Verstappen has shown us glimpses of what he can do against the absolute greats of the sport such as Lewis Hamilton or Sebastian Vettel and has shown us possible glimpses of what he can do in a title fight. But now that Red Bull and Honda are getting their act together as a partnership and a combination going into 2020, does that mean Max Verstappen can challenge for the World Championship for the first time in his career in 2020? And is he ready to do so? And what about the engine supplier and his team? Are they ready as a combination and partnership to be at that level? Well, in today's video, that's exactly what I'm going to analyse. Now, after the mostly good 2018 and very good 2019 Max Verstappen has had, going into 2020, his goal is clear. If he has a good enough car to win the World Championship, even though that will be very, very hard to do. And is he ready to do so? Because championship pressure is completely different to normal pressure. And will he be able to maintain his great level, if not elevate even higher, despite the pressure of a world championship on the line? Well, let's get into it. Now, for a driver in a world championship battle, there are plenty of things that tend to happen over the course of a season when fighting for a title. There will be moments, very big moments, where you'll need to produce your best form. There'll be certain qualifying sessions where you need to produce your best lap. There'll be certain parts of a season where you've got to be very consistent with your results. But the two biggest areas, in my opinion, when it comes to driving and succeeding in a title battle is producing the goods in mentally tough moments and producing the goods when you really have to such as a key overtake at a certain part of the race that completely changes your result. And if we look into the moments that Max Verstappen has had in his Formula 1 career so far, where he has had a lot of mental pressure put upon him, most of the time he has done well, but has also had some occasions where he has faltered. And we'll start off with his Red Bull career. And really when it comes to the moments of his career mentally, we're only going to be talking about his Red Bull career. Because at Toro Rosso, let's be honest, there's no real pressure. You're driving in the midfield and there's no pressure to get results for a team that doesn't really require certain positions in the constructors. Thus why drivers in the Toro Rosso team tend to succeed because the pressure is not exactly on. It only tends to be on when you're really underperforming. But his first big mental moment, in my opinion, of his Red Bull career was his first race for Red Bull, of course. His first victory, the 2016 Spanish Grand Prix. Now, yes, he was lucky to a degree on how things happened. You know, his teammate being put on a three-stop and the two Mercedes drivers crashing. But to hold off a very experienced and world champion driver in Kimi Raikkonen to win your first race at 18 years old is massive. Most people would have completely crumbled in this situation. But Max Verstappen showed incredible mental toughness to just about hold on for victory after being under pressure for so long. But then he goes and does something that is at the absolute other end of the spectrum. Such as what he did at Spa in 2016 where at the start of the Grand Prix, even though it wasn't totally his fault, he needlessly dive bombed down the inside of two drivers. Taking a monumental risk and of course it did not pay off. As Max, as usual at this point of his career, was showing some immaturity that we would go on to see about a year and a half later. And a year and a half later, of course, is the start of 2018. And at the start of that season, when Max had good opportunities or had to really produce in big pressurised moments, he wasn't exactly getting the job done. For example, the 2019 Chinese Grand Prix, he really should have won that race by an absolute mile, considering how quick his car was on fresher and softer tyres, but completely bottled it and finished in fifth place by trying too hard and being too aggressive, which was such a trait of him at the time. And then went and did the same in Monaco, trying again way too hard in practice three, crashing out and losing a chance at going for pole position and the race victory. But as we know, after the Monaco Grand Prix of 2018, 
there was a new Max Verstappen. And this new Max Verstappen wasn't more cautious or less aggressive. This Max Verstappen was just plain smarter in how he did things on track. And if you look at certain moments later on in 2018 compared to moments early in 2018, there was definitely a difference mentality-wise for Max Verstappen. The first example of that is how he held on for victory in the 2018 Austrian Grand Prix when under pressure from Raikkonen and Vettel. And in a similar way to his first ever race victory, the pressure was really on for him to manage his tyres, get to the end and just about stay ahead of the two Ferraris. And again, just like that race, he pulled it off. And then came in 2018, another big mental moment for Max Verstappen as after losing out on what would have been his first pole position in Formula 1 because of a great lap by Daniel Ricciardo, his teammate, Max now had to respond to the challenge his teammate laid down to him and had to make sure to not blow a good opportunity of victory in the race, which is exactly what he took by getting past Daniel at the start and running away with the Grand Prix. And then we come to 2019, a year that was definitely Max Verstappen's best in Formula 1. And mentality-wise, he was also at his absolute best. Firstly, in Hockenheim in 2019 to keep cool and calm under lots of pressure to win that Grand Prix. Despite one minute it raining and then drying up the next minute. And again, with all the chaos going on, he kept cool and calm and won the Grand Prix like an experienced pro would. And then at the next race in Hungary had a big moment for himself mentally where he got his first pole position of his career even though it was very tough for him to do so because he knew he had the car to get pole but had two very quick drivers determined to stop him getting that in Valtteri Bottas and Lewis Hamilton who were both very quick and tried their best to stop him but Max Verstappen when it mattered most produced the goods. Which, as we know, in championship battles is exactly what you have to do. The big drivers in the big moments produce when it matters. Just look at Lewis Hamilton. He does it almost every time. But just because Max Verstappen in the last few examples has improved mentally doesn't mean he still doesn't have his deficiencies. Because at Spa in 2019, he replicated what he did three years previous by being needlessly aggressive and ruining his Grand Prix straight away. And taking needless risks in a championship battle is something, of course, you cannot do, and that is something that Max has got to cut out, because he won't be able to do that like he does normally. And the race also in Mexico showed that Max is still at times immature, by first deliberately speeding under yellow flags and then getting way too aggressive trying to pass Valtteri Bottas and even Lewis Hamilton in the first few laps of the Grand Prix. Which led of course to his puncture Valtteri Bottas and then led to a quite mediocre result at the end of the day. And again, when in a title situation, he will not be able to do this. Because you cannot take risks like he did in Mexico and Spa and get away with it every single time eventually it will come back to bite you. And he has to improve, even though he has improved upon it, he has to continue improving upon his risk management. Because that's something that Lewis Hamilton especially has become very good at. Lewis Hamilton, don't get me wrong, does take the risk here and there. But he will take it in a very controlled manner. He won't be out of control when he does something risky. Like going around the outside of Sebastian Vettel with the second chicane in Italy. A risky move, but calculated. That's the difference between championship pressure and just normal pressure. You've got to make adjustments. And if Max is indeed in a title fight in 2020, he will have to make those types of adjustments. But another big moment mentally, I think, for Max Verstappen came at the 2019 Brazilian Grand Prix, especially with his overtake on Lewis Hamilton at the safety car restart. Now, yes, Lewis Hamilton wasn't exactly in the best shape to defend himself, but Max Verstappen, in a big moment, if he was going to win that Grand Prix, had to produce and show incredible mental strength to, no matter what Lewis Hamilton tried to do defensively, get past, which is exactly what he did as he battled his way past, got into the lead, and won. And that's the type of mental pressure that I think Max Verstappen can at the very least expect if Lewis Hamilton is, of course, his title rival. Which, let's be honest, he is going to be. 
But we've kind of talked about their big moments where Max Verstappen has and hasn't produced and let's keep talking about that. Because there has been moments in certain races where Max has made big moves to completely transform the complexion of his own race in a positive way. Now the first big moment he had at Red Bull in terms of trying to make an overtake work or defensive move when he needed to was the 2016 Malaysian Grand Prix when he tried to overtake teammate Daniel Ricciardo and if he did get past he would have won that Grand Prix. But when racing very hard and brilliantly with Daniel Ricciardo for the victory he just didn't quite get the move done but showed his progression just one year later when he got a chance to overtake for the lead, this time on Lewis Hamilton, he made it work. Then you have other races such as Suzuka in 2017, diving down the inside of Sebastian Vettel early on to get past Vettel's ailing car. Mexico 2017 also, where he passed Sebastian Vettel brilliantly at the start, which was a race-winning move. And those types of things you're going to have to do on a near regular basis if you're going to win championships. And then you have examples in 2019 such as his pass on Sebastian Vettel in Australia, his double pass on the two Ferraris in Spain at the start, and even Austria, the key moves he made to get up into the lead and win that Grand Prix as well, especially the one he made right at the end of that race on Charles Leclerc that was so vital. But the only big moment that I guess he failed to produce him was the Monaco Grand Prix where he was behind Lewis Hamilton for so long and was clearly faster but just couldn't get past. I think this was mostly though because Lewis Hamilton was simply driving too well to have Max Verstappen pass him but still he did have opportunities to do so. But you can see from those examples that in big moments Max Verstappen does tend to produce which is something, again, you have to do as a great driver. And I think if we look at the examples of his big moments mentally and his production in big moments, I think most of the time, Max has shone. But there are still little things here and there that can be improved upon. Again, over-aggressiveness, over-eagerness, stuff like that. And the only other thing I think Max Verstappen probably does have to work on is still consistency. Because if you look at Lewis Hamilton, who again is most likely going to be his title rival in 2020, if Max is even contending, Lewis Hamilton can maintain such a great level for so long, making it so hard to beat him. And Max Verstappen will not be able to afford the odd race where he has a crash, like he is able to when nothing's on the line. And I know it may sound impossible, but Max Verstappen almost has to have near perfect consistency. And that is the level required if you're going to win a title. But no matter how great Max Verstappen is, of course, we cannot deny that luck plays a big role in any title fight. Whether it's the bad luck of Kimi Raikkonen in 2005 having the amount of reliability issues he had, or Lewis Hamilton's bad luck in 2016 that did give Nico Rosberg the chance he needed to win his title, or whether it's the good luck that Michael Schumacher got in 2003 when Michelin were forced to redesign their tyres, thus giving Ferrari and Michael Schumacher what they needed to claim the world championship. Luck, again, plays a massive role, and if there is a title battle in 2020, it will play another big role again. But again, even if Max Verstappen is incredibly good driving-wise in 2020, his team has finally got to, with Honda, produce a car that consistently during a season is good enough. Which is something Red Bull have not been able to do with their engine supplier, whoever that may be, since 2013. Now, instead of stating the obvious when it comes to Red Bull and Honda and what they've got to do, such as for Honda, provide more power and reliability, and Red Bull, of course, make a quicker car, there are two things that Red Bull have got to do. First off is, for once, start off the season with a car that can fight for victory straight away. Like the car was acting at the end of 2019, for example, a car that can allow Max Verstappen to straight away be fighting for first or even second place at worst. Because if they again, like in 2019 or 2018, produce a car for the first six or seven races that most of the time can only do third or fourth place at best, then it's not going to happen, is it? A championship challenge is just not possible. 
And for the first time in a while, they have got to get it right early on. Because we know how good they are at developing a car over the course of a season. We've seen it for so long. This is the best team Red Bull at developing a car over the course of a season. So if for once they just started with a car that was close enough to what they ended the season like, then maybe they could actually go for it for once. And obviously, keeping up that rate of development is going to be such an important thing and is the second most important thing of their season. But if Red Bull don't start the season off with a car that is, say, as good as the car was at the end of 2019, then forget it. Because then it will just be the same as what 2019 and 2018 was. The car is okay to start off with, then peaks at the end of the season. It is time for this team to wake up at the start of a season. But what about the role of teammate for Max Verstappen, Alexander Albon? Can Alex Albon play an important role in a championship battle if there is one? Well, the role of Alexander Albon is quite simple. He is going to be Max Verstappen's number two driver. And whenever Max Verstappen is going to need help if Albon at a certain weekend is quick enough, Albon will have to help him. Whether that's attacking a championship rival to put that person down another position to help Max Verstappen in the standings, or holding up a driver again to help Max Verstappen in the standings. But I think honestly the best example of how Albon will be used to help Max Verstappen is this. Alex Albon will be used in a very Kimi Raikkonen style fashion in 2020. The Kimi Raikkonen style fashion I'm talking about refers to when obviously Kimi was at Ferrari when his teammate was clear number one, Sebastian Vettel. And when Kimi Raikkonen, for example, was not quick enough compared to Vettel or not in a position to really compete with Sebastian Vettel, Ferrari would use Kimi to block Vettel's rivals. A great example of this is the 2018 Chinese Grand Prix where for Kimi Raikkonen had a poor start. He was left out a lot longer than teammate Vettel to hold up Valtteri Bottas, who of course jumped Sebastian Vettel at the first round of pit stops. And even though Bottas got past, Raikkonen did his job because it then put Sebastian Vettel right on the back of Bottas. And that is essentially the way Albon will be used in 2020 by Red Bull. If there are certain situations where they think Albon can block or hamper one of Max's rivals, they're going to do so. Because simply Alex Albon, let's be honest, is not going to be quick enough. And that's not because Albon isn't necessarily not good enough, but it's also because Max Verstappen is so quick. But Albon is, I'm afraid, a guinea pig. And I don't think, to be honest, Albon will mind because he obviously loves driving for the Red Bull team and I don't think he really cares if he is Max's number two driver. But that is the way Albon is going to be used in 2020 in my opinion and I think that's the only way really he can help Max Verstappen in a title battle. But all in all, in conclusion, I think Max Verstappen is mostly ready to contend. If you give him the car, he should be able to push Lewis Hamilton, for example, very hard. Whether he'll win it or not is a completely different matter. But let me know in the comments section down below, guys, if Max Verstappen does have a good enough car to go for the 2020 Drivers World title, do you think in 2020 he is ready to win it? Let me know in the comments section down below and also let me know in the comments below how you think Red Bull, Honda and Alex Albon can help Max Verstappen in 2020. But yep guys, that is it for today's video. Don't forget to subscribe again for more content like this and don't forget to hit the like button as well for more content like this. And my next video guys will be coming up next week and that video is about McLaren and their prospects for 2020. So until that video, guys, it has been me, Chazer HD. Goodbye.